got this hit again. Someone is definitely trolling. Not touched on this guy. I got this hit. DK got this hit as well. These Woodlock players, man, they're, they'll do anything. On April 29th, 2022, Tier 7, the first raiding tier of Warmain's Seasonal Realm Frostburn was released. In WoW, there is a big market for selling and trading characters. Historically, this has been done by a third-party website, not sanctioned by Blizzard or the server owners on private servers, where website hosts and users make real money transactions. Warmain development are no babies and unknowing to this scene, and in an effort to tackle this, they have made their own in-house market called The Store, where players can buy coins through PayPal and then buy characters sold by other players. If there's one single trait that makes a character price go up on this said market, it's to have a unique title. Winning a realm first in tier 7 yields a player the achievement and a title. Conqueror of Naxxramas, Obsidian Slayer or Magic Seeker. This is important to understand, as the story I'm about to tell you heavily revolves around greed breaking Warmain's terms of service, and it's a threat to a dear hobby of mine, which is racing for realm first. What I'm about to present was made to encourage a debate in the RAF community. I do not condone or wish any of the name players or guilds to be harassed. Because of the scale and severity of this event, I will be referring to players by their in-game names, but I ask you not to contact any of the name players. Their actions deserve review, to move the discussion further, but this does not warrant harassment. Let's start by looking at what happened. Tier 7 gates open. Naxxramas and Obsidian Sanctum are both accessible, with the majority of guilds going for Naxxramas, as killing Saffron is the only way to access the Eye of Eternity. Going for Naxxramas can therefore yield two Realm First titles, while going for Obsidian Sanctum would only yield one. Right off the bat, you can see players in the ASDF guild and shop when get a DC. Players in Bugs Bunny also get this, which makes us conclude that it's a server instability issue. When you disconnect in a raid on Warmain, you get sent to the nearest graveyard upon re-entering the raid if you are in combat. If you are out of combat, however, you can just continue where you were. This is important. Bugs Bunny had a good lead after this with not so many disconnects or issues. They did a decent job killing bosses, they kept a decent pace. However, the guild ASDF kept getting players disconnected at key moments and mostly their paladin healers, causing wipes and deaths. Bugs Bunny manages to kill Saffron and they had to kill Tusad, but the guild Shop Wen had almost caught up at this point. Bugs Bunny go for Kel Tusad, Shop Wen decides to leave Nax and aim for Eye of Eternity realm first instead, knowing that they will be the first guild to pull Malagos. Once inside of Eye of Eternity, Shop Wen keeps having 3 up to 10 players disconnect from multiple pulls. What is this? Yeah, this is a This is a trick. Uh, so we got. I'm oh, disconnected now. Yeah, I can't use it. These continuous disconnects for multiple pulls was just so enough that Bugs Bunny could catch up by killing KT, enter Eye of Eternity, and get another realm first. Once the run first was taken, the disconnects have now stopped for all other guilds. A few minutes after the race has concluded, multiple characters of Bugs Bunny are being sold on third-party websites, indicating that this might have been the goal all along. Selling characters post-race is a very common practice. At this point, accusations and wild theories surrounding what happened are flying around. Who was kicking players? Was it random disconnects? How did they do it? And who knew about it? I wish to emphasize that the ASDF guild and Shop One both had their realm first attempts ruined by this. Both of them have practice and were trying their best to compete. I will now present my take on the legality and ethics of what happened before, during and after the race. Now did anything illegal happen? 
The legality we answer to are the terms and service of Warmain. Whatever laws you might answer to in real life does not really apply on Season 3 of Warmain. In order to say if the terms of service were broken, we must understand what happened. The prevailing theory is that some add-ons have an exploitable weakness that the exploiters used. Here's an example of the weakness in the add-on called Deadly Boss Mods. Deadly Boss Mods communicates with itself and other players through hidden channels. This was added back in the day as a way for a raid leader to ask its raiders, yo man, which version of Deadly Boss Mods are you using? Are you sure you have updated it? A player can communicate through DBM by sending a command inside the WoW client and ask the add-on a question it must reply an answer to. For example, let's say you would ask Deadly Boss Mod, what version are you? The Deadly Boss Mod would then reply with, I am this version. If this request gets sent too many times or too rapidly, it can trigger two different mechanisms that are very interesting at Warmain. Number one, that the boss mode sends too many answers at the same time, let's say a thousand times per second, and your client will crash. This is a client-side weakness. Your computer can't handle the stress. Number two, the messages trigger the anti-cheat of Warmain, causing a throttle protection to kick the player for sending too many messages at the same time, confusing the player with trying to DDoS the actual server. With enough requests sent by enough players, you can target anyone with these exploitable add-ons. It's a bit like a DDoS, but inside of WoW, all your other internet connections are working just fine. So if this was the method, was it against the terms of service of Warmain? Despite the illegal use of Blizzard's intellectual property to monetize Wrath of the Lich King as a private server, Warmain has put extensive efforts into creating their own terms of service, and in 2016, they constructed their own player's code of conduct, to help the community and its game masters to have guidelines regarding bans. This document was later updated in 2019, and will be the document I will be referring to in terms of legality of this case. A problem we quickly run into when reading the player's code of conduct are that all instances of exploits, cheating, or abuse towards other players are game-specific. Accessing illegal parts of a map using a third-party program like scripting, breaking the game's laws of physics to run faster, etc. These types of exploits. But exploiting an add-on weakness to disconnect a player and make them lose realm-first titles or potentially arena games? I wasn't able to find any good examples where this was considered breaking the player's code of conduct. More so, it seems like it's up to the players themselves to use safe add-ons that can't be exploited. You must understand, Warmain's own DDoS protection is likely what caused the disconnect, as the amount of messages sent made the anti-cheat detect a risk of a DDoS. Thus, Warmain's anti-cheat tries to protect all the players on Warmain by eliminating the DDoS threat client. The fact that the DDoS threat happened due to an add-on exploit, Warmin has no good way of knowing as it is happening. So, getting disconnected through malicious add-on use by competing guilds or arena opponents is not easily dismissed as illegal. It's not a bug exploit. It's not a PvP exploit. At best, it's considered disruptive gameplay. So, in a legal sense, in our field, it would be hard to justify banning the culprits based on the code of conduct. Warmin understands the value of a realm first title, a well geared character, or an arena achievement on their platform. This brings us to the legality of selling the character. Only the Warmin's official store and Warmin coins as a modality is allowed for player transactions. This last segment clearly was broken, but the severity of the punishment, or if the players even end up getting punished, remains unclear as they remain unbanned at the time of making this video. What is an appropriate punishment? The winners of the race who benefited from the unfortunate disconnects of their opponents throughout the night may have been more or less aware about what was going on. Regardless, many of them are indifferent to getting banned or not, as they were planning on leaving the server after the race was over regardless. This is common practice, I've done it myself many times, you play the race, then you leave, as the farm stage of Wrath isn't as entertaining as the race itself. So, whether or not Warmain punished these players through a ban or not, chances are it's nothing more than a slap on the wrist to most of these players. They got the achievement, they got the run first, they sold the character. It's over. You may be wondering, why did you make this video on Fallen? I'm hoping to raise awareness about this topic, and I'm hoping to give players, server owners and add-on creators incentive to make their own clients, add-ons, servers, as exploit protected as possible. 
With this exploit, we've seen a shift where prior to this race, players getting caught cheating have mostly used scripts or injecting code to improve their own performance, much akin to using steroids in uh, traditional sports. But with these recent events, the exploits now are offensive ones, made to target competitors, incap incapacitate them from competing, while the cheaters themselves can play normally and can get a win even when playing really sloppy. This is a tragic day in WoW competition for me. In a dystopian future, it won't be enough with secure add-ons, servers, clients, as these offensive types of exploits don't really need to rely on a simple add-on weakness to work. They can use a weakness in your internet service provider, your router, your internet protocol. I hope you enjoyed this video. I doubt the last ink has dried to this story when I'm making it, but I felt like it should be told.